Hey, welcome to the shop today. Gas and flux core welding is an awesome thing to learn. And in the past, we've done multiple projects with welding using this machine I have here. And in today's video, I wanna show you some welding techniques, how to set up the welder for uh, gas metal arc welding and flux core gasless metal arc welding, um, because there's some really cool things to learn about them. And um, at the end of the video, I'll kind of share with you why I choose one process over the other when fabricating things in my garage. So without further ado, let's get to work. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about the max limitations of this welder. It's a Hobart Handler 140. It can output between 25 to 140 amps, and it can weld two types of process. We have the flux core wire, uh, which is a gasless tubed wire and then we have the solid wire which is the gas metal arc weld so we have two different processes and then both have their limitations based on stock or thickness of material now the flux core material wire can weld up to quarter inch stock on its the machine's highest setting so that's going to be why I, why I would use the flux core most of the time with this machine. But I do like to use um, the gas metal arc welder for smaller stuff like frames and building things around, um, quick repairs, installing catalytic conversions, things like that. I'll use switch over from the flux over to the gas because it's just a much cleaner wire process to use. Now, as you can see, I've got some material here. This is 316 stock, so I would use the flux core with this material and this is eighth inch stock so i wouldn't use typically the flu the the flux for this because i can weld with good penetration with the gas so depending on the stock i'll choose between what process i'm going to use now both of these are size 035 wire it's really convenient to have matching wires so when you're doing jobs you can quickly switch over and do a changeover um, i use a 035 tip on my torch so once we go ahead and uh, run the wire through i'll just go ahead and once the wire is sticking out of the torch i'll run my tip in and then i don't have to change tips or have two different sizes i can run one tip for both process all right so this is my welder here opened up it's very convenient because there's like a guide here for the process that you're going to weld and the material basically a recommended setting for the material that you're going to weld. We need to electrically set up that conductor. So what we're going to do is for flux core, you can see it's a DC electro negative. We'll have to swap the polarity here on these lugs to make sure that our torch is electrode negative. So this is the actual electrode. We're going to go ahead and set it on. Now there's a nipple right here on the back of this um, spindle here, which also has a tension. Now you wanna make sure this tension doesn't um, spin freely. You want some drag on it, that way it doesn't uncoil your roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this on, and then there's two holes on my coiled roll. I'm gonna make sure it's up at the 12 o'clock position. Go ahead and set that on real nice. And this nut here is left-handed. So we'll go ahead and set the, the nut on left-handed, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my wire. I'll go ahead and take my wire, cut a fresh piece off, open up the drive roller. This here is your idle and your drive is down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the grooved roller just so I can share with you the size wire and the setting for that. So there's gonna be two settings on the print. It's 030 to 035 size wiring, that's 35 thousandths wire. And the printing will be on the front for the groove on the back. So, and then you can flip it to 024, which is gonna be the smaller groove now on the back if the lettering was on the front of the roller. So we're gonna make sure that we use the 030 to 035 wire size groove. I'm gonna go ahead and set that in position and lock it in position. And I'm gonna feed my wire through the guide and into this liner here of the torch. And I'm gonna go ahead and feed that in until it stops. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lock that wire into position. All right, so now I have my welder plugged in and I have my torch here. I'm gonna turn the welder on. It's pretty loud, but just bear with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start the drive roller. As you can see, as it's turning, it's already taken contact. I'm gonna back off until it starts to slip. See it slipping right now? We're not pulling. And then I'm gonna go ahead and walk it back in. So I'm consistently driving and I really like that setup. So once the wire comes out of the torch, what I'll do is I'll do the glove check. Basically, I'm going to feed the wire into my glove. If the spool starts to 
slip, then what I'll do like that, I'll go ahead and add more tension. And I wanna do this until the wire can curl without the spool slipping. And I think that's pretty consistent. Maybe just a little bit more and now we're set up. Our wire is quickly set up. Trim off the excess and then add our new tip. We are ready to weld once we get this tight. If there's anything worth welding, it's gonna be worth cleaning. So in the fabrication world, there's usually two types of metals that we like to work with as far as carbon steel. We have a hot roll and a cold roll. Now a hot roll material is gonna look like this. It's got rounded edges and it's got a lot of this slag. It's called mill scale. You're gonna see that on a lot of the material. Um, you're gonna to wanna to use an abrasive or something to kind of clean that off and some alcohol to wipe it clean if, from any oils or rust buildup. Now, usually the flux core can burn just right through it because of the detergents within the flux. But uh, like I said, if it's worth welding, it's definitely worth cleaning regardless of the flux inside of that wire. Um, so that's gonna be your hot roll type material. Now, cold roll material is a lot, a little bit easier to work with. It doesn't have that heavy mill scale on it. It's a lot more cleaner. But again, I still use an abrasive to kind of clear off any of that scale right there. Very minimal though. But on cold roll, what you'll typically see is uh, oil or some type of oil-based coating on the material. Then that helps it prevent it from rusting. So um, definitely want to use some kind of solvents or an alcohol to wipe the material clean. And then you can have some really clean material. And this helps with like porosity um, uh, and slag inclusions. And it can even help um, just making and producing better welds. So that's a little bit about the material. As you can see on the material, I've got some notes on here. We're gonna be using the maximum output for this machine for the gas metal arc welding, GMAW, um, is eighth inch stock. We can, we can only weld with that process up to eighth inch stock. And for the settings on my welder, we're gonna set it to number four and the wire speed is gonna be at 40. Okay, and then on the flux, which we're gonna do right now, is um, called FCAW. And we're gonna set it to number four, the highest setting on my welder. And then this is actually 3 16 stock, not quarter inch stock. It would be a little bit larger than this. But for 3 16 um, we're gonna set it to a maximum of four and the wire speed is 35. Now, if we were running quarter inch stock, we're gonna be welding two pieces together, um, which would be the maximum output for this welder. Um, we would actually change the wire speed to 50. So we'll go from 35 to 50 because we're gonna need more wire to fill up that joint. So it makes sense when you go from a heavier stock, you're gonna bump up that wire speed to fill in that puddle and weld it in. Let's run and talk about our first pass with the flux core. All right, so as a welder, we face many different variables when it comes to welding two pieces of material together. Now, as a beginner, we're just sitting here on the bench running a fillet pass across a T-joint. There are gonna be three main things I want you to pay attention to, and those are gonna be the stick out, the angle of the torch, and then the travel speed. If you can just pay attention to those as, as a beginner, all of the other variables will come in, and then over time, you get better and better and better. So, um, the first one, let's talk about the stick out. The stick out is the distance the wire sticks out past the end of the contact and away from the base material. Now, typically for me, I run about three eighths to a half inch away from the material and I'll consistently keep that distance as I run the weld across the base material. The second one is going to be my torch angle. So the bottom piece of this material um, is sitting flat. If I move my torch up to a 45 and then I tip the torch inward five to about 15 degrees, that's going to be the angle. So I'm at about three eighths to a half inch out away from the material, 45 up and five to 15 this way. And I'm going to maintain that all the way across this joint. Now, once I've established the weld puddle, I'm going to want to basically maintain the width of that weld puddle. Now, typically the width of the weld is going to be the width of the base material. So now I've struck my arc. 
Um, I've got my distance. I've got my angle of the torch. And now I'm, I've also established the weld puddle. I'm going to start traveling that at a s consistent speed, everything all together simultaneously at once until I've reached the end of my weld. And I'll do that 100 times until I have it right and I don't forget those three main variables, stick out, torch, angle, and travel speed. And all of this begins with the beginning of that first puddle and then moving it along. So definitely you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that width of your, of your weld bead. So without further ado, um, let's get ready to weld. That's um, the three main things as far as a welding technique that I want you guys to pay attention to. And then we'll move along to some things that will help us uh, basically um, with our welding tools. So this is what I call anti-spatter. You can buy this stuff um, pretty, pretty cheap. I like to spray some of this on my contact tips. It, it helps uh, prolong the life of the tips and it keeps everything working smooth and clean. So anti-spatter helps keep any of that slag or dingleberries off of the tip and the um, gas nozzles. So very good products here, nozzle dip, we'll talk more about that when we get into gas metal arc welding. We are ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and get some safety gear on. Got my gloves, got my welding sleeves on right here. I've got my gram clamp, ground clamp connected to a good sturdy ground on a metal steel table. Let's go ahead and burn this weld in and run our first weld. So the fourth welding technique that I can offer is if the weld material has slag, you're gonna wanna drag. And what that means is basically you're gonna drag that weld puddle um, across forming a bead from start to finish. All right, so the weld is complete. I've cleaned it up really well with my brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and inspect it and I'll kind of share with you what a welder would look for as far as inspecting welds. Um, we always look at our welds. It's kind of like removing a spark plug and diagnosing a combustion engine. Um, very similar to welding. We have to diagnose our welds. So um, we can be, first of all, become better welders and also um, it tells us what we need to improve on. So some things that we look at as far as an inspection is the bead width. Um, typically you want the width of your bead to be the thickness of the material. This one is very close. I, I went more on the wider side of things, but um, it, you definitely you typically want the bead width to be the width of the material or the stock that you're welding. So I would pass this one a little on the wider side, but that will be okay. Um, secondly, we want to look for like porosity, slag inclusions, undercut, it's where um, the fillet doesn't wash out between both pieces of the material. And um, we want to look at the contour of the, of the bead. Basically, is it convexed or concaved? This one looks more, uh, on the left, looks more concaved than the one on the right. It looks more con convexed, but very similar in, t in appearance. Um, lots of slag. I got that uh, wiped down on this side. Not as much slag on this side, but um, I'm just making sure that all of the, the sp splatter and the slag is clean. We want to make sure everything's like really clean when we're inspecting these welds. And um, for the most part, that's to me a, you know, going to be a really good as far as penetration and the weld on that. Um, when you get to the point where you can produce welds of this quality, you can start working and building trailers and things like that. But definitely, I always say, um, build up your confidence here at the table and then um, slowly work on improving your welds and your fabrication techniques. So um, we don't have enough time in this video because it's getting kind of long. Stay tuned for part two where I do a quick changeover on our flux core welder we're going to switch everything over to gas and then i'll show you the outcome of um welding with the gas side of things on our eighth inch stock over there so stay tuned for that and uh, we'll see you in the next video stick around have a good one peace out